So, we've arrived in the town of Mulcum, but as you can hear, this place has the same dire music as Zima had. In this instance, the city has been burned to the ground. The only person here is this guy. Say hello to Rune Walsh. And these guy, this person is apparently a companion of Alice, and knows her pretty well. And yeah, he's already not lo looking really kindly to Chaz here. Zio has struck again, according to Mr. Rune here. And Rune is quite the cocky little SOB. I wonder where Alice gets it from. So who is Zio? Well, we don't know yet, but we're gonna find out eventually. And with the town destroyed, we can't find any Alice line here. Instead, we have to go to, to, to Tanoi. Quite the tongue twister! So from there, we have to go to Krupp, and then we have to go, and that'll take us to Tanoi. But Han doesn't like the idea of going to Krupp. But we're going there anyway, because Chaz is almost, Chaz is dead, we gotta revive him. And we're gonna get Room coming along with us. Chaz doesn't like this idea. But since Alice is running the show, Chaz is overruled. And unless I didn't know any better, I think Alice is blushing. Are Alice and Rune an item? <laughs> yeah, and I think Chaz Bono is gonna take exception to the name Chaz being referred to as a stupid name. So, yeah, we gotta be moving on here. I'm gonna go take the quick way out of here, which is by going north, because it's faster to go out this way than by going back the way we came. So now we gotta get to Krupp, and with Chaz dead, we're not fighting, we're passing. So here's Krupp on the coastline, and we gotta get to an inn right now. And we're gonna have to pay 60 Meseta to revive Chaz. Now that we got that taken care of, let's now go over to the armor store. There's no weapons to buy here in Krupp, just armor. And conveniently enough, I have enough money to buy two carbon suits. One for Alice and one for Chaz, and after what happened, I'm definitely gonna need them, and now I am broke. <laughs> so let's give Alice her carbon suits. Let's give Chaz his carbon suits, so they don't die off on us so quickly next time. And as you can see, Rune starts off with us pretty well off. He's starting off at level 17. And for those of you who are familiar with RPGs and have seen characters like this, I'm sure you can pretty much gather already that Rune is not going to be sticking with us all that long. At least not for right now. He's going to be with us temporarily. So here in Krupp you can do some reunions with Han, like with his mother and father for instance. His father, however, is quite, quite rude. There are a lot of rude, rude characters in this game, and he takes exception to the fact that Han is at the Motavia Academy as a student. Apparently, an important education is not an important ideal to Han's father. But apparently, his mother is the other way on that regard. And there's another reunion we can do here in Krupp as well for Han. But before we do that, we're just going to save because this gives us an opportunity to um, do the story in two different directions. Wrong button. So just save on both of these files. And so, this is something that is optional. This reunion is optional. You don't have to do it. So, we're going to meet with Han's fiance, Saya. And this is something, as I mentioned before, um, I'll just let this pass by and show you how it goes down. Um, you're not required to do this reunion here. You can do it, but it will be forced on you later on in the game. There's a situation where you will be forced to be having a reunion with Saya. 
So either way, you'll be getting to meet her. But I just wanted to show this particular situation to demonstrate this first reunion. And then you'll get to see the second reunion later in a separate video. And obviously, Saya cares for Han's safety. Leading to this kissing scene, which is the best thing about this particular reunion. So, with that taken care of, let's leave Saya to her school children. And let's now make our way out of Krupp and head off to Tanoi. So, northward we go. And another mob boss. Another monster battle. We're not doing a boss duel yet, we're doing a monster battle. So, let's see if we can get rid of the sand dudes this time, especially now that we're four-handed. And indeed we do. And the sand dudes are actually really good for Mercedes. They're worth 40 apiece. So, the tunnel to Tanoi is blocked. But this will be no sweat for a guy like Rune. Why is he so cocky? Because he can do something like this. Boom goes the dynamite! <laughs> and here's something I should point out. Han's saying, I've never seen it before? Instead of saying, I've never seen it before. Like, that should be a statement, not a question. This isn't Jeopardy, Han! <laughs> and another thing, that's where the question mark should have actually been used. Chaz should be, shouldn't be saying magic, or shouldn't be saying magic. He should be saying, MAGIC?! So, here we are in the Valley Maze. It's not much of a maze, just a couple of, um, different places that you can go off track to find stuff. It's really not that much of a maze. Pretty straightforward. So, now we got a new enemy. We got some blobs to take care of. As... Alice goes for slashers and hits the top of their heads, bride style. As you can see, the blobs are pretty good for Mercedes as well. They're also worth 40 apiece. I, um, yeah, I think we're gonna use some healing just to be safe here. Because even at experience level 4, the monsters here and here can hurt quite a bit. As you can see, 19 points taken off of Alice, just that easy. Wow, what a bludgeoning by Rune! So... Ah, uh, not yet. Now we got some carry-on crawlers. Oh! Don't do that again, please! Don't do that again! Oh, I'm flirting with disaster here, but thankfully, I've survived the battle. And I'm definitely going to need to do some more healing after that. Wow, that, that was quite painful. That, that's... These guys are taking off more than I expect them to. I, get, I guess these guys, for my Let's Play, decided to come with full force here. And just showing that this second passage has absolutely nothing. And they're still bringing it! Oh, please don't kill Han! Please do not kill Han! Yeah, we're having a lot of close calls here. These enemies in this valley maze, <clears throat> they came to play. It's like I'm dealing with a whole bunch of Miz clones. And more blobs. And another close call! Okay, can we stop with the close calls, please? This is getting too close for comfort. Wow. Lots of people being killed, getting put near death real fast here. I, w I was not expecting this. I really wasn't. I'm getting a quite nervous. And that's a swing and a miss. And they're using threat on me for some reason. I don't know why they would though. You're not a caterpie. And it's basically doing the Caterpie thing again. Yeah, I'm familiar with some of the old school Pokemon, but not the new ones. But, 
for those of you who have ever tried to figure out what the Pokemon phenomenon is all about, it's really nothing that special. I mean, even back then I couldn't understand it. And so we got 300 of Seda. So, yeah, basically here's how the Pokemon phenomenon works. What, here's what you need to know about any Pokemon episode ever made. Ash, Brock, and name a female companion are traveling through whatever place that they're going through. Ash gets a fit of hunger pains. The female companion complains about it. Then they, they come across the episode's feature Pokemon. It's usually carried by a female trainer that Brock suddenly starts to try and hit on unsuccessfully. They find out that the trainer and the featured Pokemon have some sort of situation, and it's up to Ash, Brock, and name a female companion to deal with it. But while they're trying to do so, Team Rocket comes in, tries to snatch all the Pokemon, they spell off their monotonous propaganda, and then they get that's screwed over. Then Ash uses Pikachu to shock Team Rocket. They go boom in an explosion. Team Rocket goes, We're blasting off again! And then with that, Ash, Brock, and name a female companion say goodbye to the trainer and the featured Pokemon, and they head off to their next destination. That's all you need to know about any Pokemon episode ever. And as we once again had demonstrated, the carry-on crawlers are once again doing the Caterpie thing. Uh, what the fascination with Pokemon is, even after 15 years, I still never understand it. Anyway, I bored you enough. Welcome to Tanoe! So, we're just gonna go cut to the chase here before we do any shopping, because at this point, we really can't because we don't have enough money. So, we're meeting with the, ta with the town elder, and he's much more than the town elder. He's the information monger known as Grandfather Doran. So, what do we want to know? Well, we can find about this, uh, the secret of refining titanium, I mean, for those of us who are familiar with golf, lots of golf clubs are used, made with titanium. And apparently the grandfather isn't willing to tell us, but hey, if there's anyone who's involved with the golf industry who can tell us about the secret of refining titanium, drop a comment and let me know about it. Let us know about it as well. So, we're not going to know about the secret of refining titanium, so... Let's find out why the path to the village was blocked. Apparently, these guys were waiting for a preparation to see if Zaya was going to come and attack, and he's pretty much brief about that information. So, no, we don't want to know about the titanium. We know about the blocking of the rock. But apparently, the information monger has quite some unusual information. Measurements on Isla's brain when? Well, why not? I mean, there are men watching this. They're surely going to know this information. But Alice takes exception, as well she should. Yeah. <laughs> Grandfather Doran definitely picked the wrong time to be talking about that particular piece of topic. And Alice is quite annoyed. And she's preparing to swing to the fences again. <laughs> oh, Rune, save Grandfather Doran, please! <laughs> yeah. So, thankfully, Rune has defused the situation. So, Rune has some business, as he mentioned before, with Grandfather Doran. And Grandfather Doran also wants to let them help themselves to the out to the outline that we need. Only one problem. Since it is that warehouse is in a, since a dungeon, there's gonna be monsters in it. And to say that it's a teensy bit dangerous at this point of the game is an understatement. The warehouse is very power has very powerful monsters. And so we're getting Grizz to come and join us. And he's being exchanged for Rune, who's going to be leaving us, so that's the end of Rune for the time being. And he's still pissing off Chaz. <laughs> and he's trying to give him a bit of humility. Especially since Chaz and characters are at experience level 5. So with that conversation coming to an end, 
Rune leaves us, and Grizz now comes in to substitute. Too bad I don't have a basketball substitution point to suggest that. So this is Grizz's little sister Panna. These two are the sole survivors of the Molka Massacre. Basically, like, they're like the two children in Zima who were the sole survivors of the mass petrification that went on in that particular village. So, we're gonna go and explain why I'm not gonna be doing um, some shopping right away. Um, I'm trying to remember where the stores are in this place, and it's not easy to remember where they are. I know that they're the blue stalls, but it's the specific blue stalls that they're at. Also, getting some of the reactions from the Votavians, and they don't take very kindly to us humans. So, as you can see, the titanium mail is expensive. It takes 1120, and I will be willing to buy one now. And as you can see, Han can't even be equipped with one. He has, has to be stuck with a mediocre carbon suit. So, I have to buy another one of those. Riz already comes equipped with one of them. I also need to buy a titanium helmet for Chaz. And so that's going to cost me about 1,700 Mercedes to get those two pieces of armor alone, plus a circlet for Han, that's going to get us to about 1,800. I'm here because I need Alshlein. Don't be so rude. So here's the weapons store. As you can see, I need to buy a titanium sword for Chaz. I need to buy two titanium slashers, two titanium daggers. All told, that's going to cost me about um, another 1,800 Meseta. So, all told, we're looking at well over 3,000 Meseta of stuff that I'm going to need to buy. And since I don't sell any of my stuff, it's pretty much something that I'm going to need to take into consideration. So I'm going to do some grinding here, but that's going to be done off camera. So I'm going to save at this point, and I'm going to rejoin you once all my grinding is finished and I have all the appropriate weapons and armor upgrades that I need. So at this point, I'll end it here. So thanks very much for watching the start of the Let's Play of Fantasy Star 4. And when I join you again, we'll get started on our trip to the warehouse where we can get the Auschwitz to help out the people in Sema and Birth Valley. So until next time, take care, and I'll see you soon.